Uh, hello, my name is Vladimir, and I will today present a talk with such a tricky name, but it is, it is about the simulation of branching random walks in random media. Uh, let us have a brief uh, literature outline. Uh, for the first time, apparently, the problems related to the branching random walks in random media was discussed in the series of works by Zildovich, Malchanov, Rudmakin, and Sokolov in 1980s. It was uh, about some chemical kinetics, uh, like physics related, phys problem related to physics, but the mathematical uh, definitions and the mathematical formalization, these problems uh, have, um, ha these problems have uh, get only in the series of works by Gertner and Malchanov in 1990 and in 1998, where the, uh, there was a strict mathematical definitions, for example, the concept of intermittency, which is a kind of central, uh, central problem now, uh, was defined only here. Uh, then only in 2000, uh, these problems was the mm, instruments and techniques that was described in the previous works was applied, were applied to the uh, branching runs of walks in random media strictly in the case of homogeneous media and uh, in the case of uh, some uh, strictly um, conditions on potential and only for the simple branching runs of walk. And uh, only in 2020, 20, 2012, uh, these uh, restrictions was removed by Ilyana Yeravaya, uh, and uh, also the non-homogeneous branch around the walks was uh, assumed. And we have uh, started to um, investigate the current topic from the statistical point of view only uh, a year ago, and uh, today we will have we will discuss the some results and um, mm, improvements that was made on these results from the this preprint. It is available now now on archive and is uh, now under peer review. So let us start from the basic definitions. Mm, the random walk we consider a simple multidimensional uh, random walk with a, some general operator a which is symmetric, homogeneous in space, irreducible, and regular. So we can think about this uh, in this way. Uh, we have a particle which waits for an exponential time and then jumps uh, somewhere on the multidimensional lattice according to some intensities that is defined uh, previously. Uh, and this uh, process continues, so on and so on. Uh, we will, in theory, there is a general theory for the operator A, but today we will have uh, we will talk only about very simple case, operator kappa delta, when the particle can only jump to the neighboring points of the lattice with equal probabilities because it already has all the effects we are need to understand and analyze. And it is very simple to simulate and to work with. Uh, the branching process that we will consider today is uh, simple. The particle can only die and split into two particles. And of course, it can just uh, do nothing during a small time. Again, we can think about this as particle waits for some exponential time and then dies or splits into two. Uh, these two results, these two, um, these two mechanisms can be combined into a branching random walk. Uh, so uh, as you can see on the slide, the idea is the particle waits for an exponential time and then jumps, splits, or dies. Uh, this is, uh, again, this is a non-random medium, just a simple branching random walk. And uh, uh, we will study this model. This is a, a sophisticated model. We will study this through the moment approach. So we are interested in total number and local number of particles. So for example, for the total population size on the lattice, uh, it will be denoted by mu t. And we will study this variable through its moments. Of that is on the bottom of the slide. You can see, so for, for example, the average number of particles on the lattice, the variance of it, and so on and so on. And for, uh, but this is like valid and there is some results, uh, there is a uh, very big uh, amount of results for this problem, but we will introduce some randomness in our model in the following way. Consider that the medium, the branching medium on which our particles, uh, our lattice, okay, uh, consider our lattice, and on the lattice there is somewhere sources of branching when the particles can divide uh, into two and die. And now consider that these, uh, um, that, that these sources have uh, random intensities of dying and splitting. 
So in each source, there is two random variables, B2 and B0. B2 corresponds to the intensity of splitting, and B0 corresponds to the intensity of dying. And uh, I need to emphasize that we will consider that the branching takes place on the frozen medium. That means, uh, for example, let us just imagine the experiment. We will have two buttons. The first one will randomize media, and the second one will start the branching random walk. And the branching random walk is, um, uh, the branching random walk uh, will be done as follows. At first we push the button which randomizes the media, and then we push the button which starts the branching random walk. The media is stationary in and won't be randomized anymore. So only for the, like, at the initial time. If we will start another experiment, again we hit the button that randomizes the branching media, then we hit the button that starts the branching random walk. So we will have uh, this model. And again, uh, uh, this mechanism can be, um, um, unites with the random walk and we will gain the branch of random walk and random media. We will need to introduce such a variable as a random potential. This is a kind of variable about uh, the um, criticality of the process. Uh, this is the intensity of splitting minus the intensity of dying. But this is random. It, it will be very useful uh, for the next uh, results. Uh, so the main problem in the one of the main problems in the theory of branch random walks is that we cannot apply the moments approach because, uh, for example, in the non-random media, in the simple media, we just can uh, describe our average number of particles by moments. But in random media, for example, for this media, uh, we will have small number of particles, small average number of particles. This is a poor media, and this media medium is. Uh, rich, so we'll have a big number of particles, and these two moments won't coincide. So the moment today, uh, moment in this um, in this model is a random variable by itself. It's not convenient to describe a random variable by random variable. So we will uh, again apply the methods of moments and average our random variable again, uh, average it by the media, and we will have. Um, so-called annealed moment. So these moments are called quenched moments, that means frozen moments, and this one uh, is called annealed moment, it's like unfrozen moment, but this uh, terminology is, um, has its uh, deep roots in physics, so we will uh, use uh, this, this terminology. Um, the main result um, that was developed uh, in this theory uh, can be derived from the, from the very start. So we just derive the equations for the generating functions, then we, from them we derive the equations of the moments. They will have such sophisticated structure. For example, this term is like some big recurrent function, so it's not easy. But for example, for the uh, first moments, it will have a quite simple and a beautiful structure. And then we can use uh, Feynman cut representation, some, uh, a bunch of auxiliary results, and from all this we can obtain the limit theorems. So we need some uh, conditions on the branching potential. These conditions are, the first one is very wide. So just, uh, we, we need it just to use the moments approach. Without them, there, will be, uh, the, there won't be a uh, unique uh, non-negative solution for the differential equation we have seen on the previous slide. And uh, the other one is kind of technical. It is needed uh, for this asymptotics. But again, it, it, it is Y2. So uh, the main result is that for the uh, homogeneous and both homogeneous and non-homogeneous media, we will have the asymptotics of this type. Uh, it's not obvious why, we, uh, why I'm talking about this right now and why do we need this in our simulation. But to understand this, we need to mm, somehow uh, notice some uh, properties of the obtained asymptotics. And to do this, we need uh, and another definition, uh, the definition of the intermittency. So we will, uh, about fu function f and g, we will say that f h is uh, much smaller than g if, the, if this term uh, tends to plus infinity, sorry for the typo, as, ten, as time, is, uh, ti time tends to the plus infinity. And uh, if we consider some general uh, random field eta, uh, a, a family of uh, general random fields ether, and if they have the following moments, so it's just they have all the moments with respect to the medium, uh, then this field will be called intermittent, 
if they are ergodic, we just need this, and uh, this condition is true. Uh, this condition is true if uh, we have, uh, this technical condition is true, it's just, uh, that, um, so if th this technical condition is true, then this is true, but the main is this one, and uh, it, again, it's not obvious what this condition implies, uh, because it's, again, looking kind of technical, but in Gertner and Malchanov, a uh, full page of text is devoted to the interpretation of uh, this condition in the common sense, and it appears that the intermittency, this condition, means that as time tends to infinity, the main contribution to the each moment function is carried by very high and very widely spaced peaks. So that means if we are just hitting start and uh, uh, waiting for an infinite moment, when we uh, take a look at our field again, it will look like something like this. There is nothing and then high peak of energy. And then again nothing. So it's, it's not like a random noise. We, we will see this uh, a little bit further. So this is intermittent field, and this, this is not intermittent field. Um, why do we uh, talk, ah, okay. Uh, one of the main results of the theory is about, we can use the previous limit theorems, and under, uh, for simplicity, variable type uh, potential, we can prove that the field of the quenched moments is intermittent. So again, we have a branching random walk in random media, we can define it by the quenched moments, and the field of the quenched moments is intermittent, and that means that this field cannot be uh, defined very well by these annealed moments. So let me just, just make it a little bit clearer, clearer, clearer again. So this field, this one, is intermittent. So these moments cannot describe this field very well. It describes only the high peaks of the field, the high realizations of the medium. And uh, there is some statistical, uh, statist there was some statistical interest in this. So s sorry for this, uh, this very simple uh, example, but. Yeah, what is uh, function F capital? It's distribution function. F uh, yeah, 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 it's just the distribution function, so it's tails. Uh -huh. The tails, uh, there's, a, there's a type of alpha. The yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, so, sorry for this example. Again, I am like have it a, a little bit biology background, uh, and we'll talk about some some very simple uh, examples. So, consider some system that has that can be very well approximated by the branching random walk. For example, consider some puddle, a very big puddle, uh, and bacteria in this puddle. Puddle is very big, so we can uh, approximate the structure of a puddle by an uh, infinite lattice. And the bacteria can divide and can die. So they can be uh, approximated by the branching process. So we have a, like a simple uh, description of a branching random walk. And we have a statistical uh, task to estimate the properties of the puddles. What we can do from the statistical way? Just use a moment approach. Average them, uh, calculate their variance, and so on and so on and so on. It will be easy. But uh, we need to understand that in real life, each puddle is slightly different from the other one. So we can think about puddle as about some random media, which is the realization of some uh, general population of random medias. So it's random variable. And if we again try to use some statistical approaches, uh, then we need to understand that this variable is the averaging of our trajectories and averaging of the media, of a media. That means that this is, de facto, annealed moment. And annealed moment has very bad, uh, uh, the annealed moment due to intermittency cannot describe the situation very well. Uh, to show this uh, discrepancy, to show this uh, process, we um, considered um, some models and tried to simulate branching random walks. Uh, and so to try to estimate, so make these, these estimations and try to see what, what will be uh, with the intermittency. We will assume that the branch random walk is a simple and symmetric, so the particle can only jump to the neighboring points. We'll consider the simple Z lattice. We have also considered the, uh, uh, the three-dimensional Z lattice, but just for simplicity, let's, let's consider this one. And the intensity is fixed. And let's consider four different models. So two non-random models and two random models. 
uh, the non-random models, in, in the non-random models, we have a, uh, one homogeneous mo model, this one, and non-homogeneous model. So in the first model, the particle can divide in each point of lattice, and here only in, at zero. Uh, and in the random media, the same. The branching intensities was chosen, as you can see on the slide. The idea here is this is a random intensity with approximately Gaussian type of uh, tail. And the mathematical expectation of this intensity is equal to 2. And mathematical expectation of this intensity is equal to 1. So like in average, this intensity is equal to this one. And these models are in some kind, uh, some kind of comparable. Uh, to do this, some technical details, yes, we used the R data statistical environment and we used the computer cluster and we are very grateful to the Department of Molecular Genetics because without this um, uh, computing power, I don't think that this work is possible. So we need a kind of big cluster and uh, <laughs> a large amount of processor time. Uh, the idea of, simula of simulation is simple. So let us froze one media some media, some branching medium, and then simulate a couple, couple of trajectory, trajectories on it. For example, 1,000 trajectories. If we average these trajectories, we will have the estimation for the quenched moment. Uh, let's consider the other medium. Again, simulate a couple of trajectories, average them, we will and we will have the, uh, another realization of the quenched moment. Let us do this uh, 200 times, and we will have a sample of quenched moments. If we average them, we will have an annealed moment. This is, uh, here you can see on the slide. And this is what we are interested in. We, uh, for the convenience of co comparison between random and non-random media, we have modeled the uh, non-random media in the same way. But in the non-random media, the media is non-random. So here we will have the same media than uh, here, and here will be the same media. Non-random media, non-random media, non-random. Um, let's, let us. There is some uh, statistical part. So uh, there is very interesting statistical task because uh, we, uh, the process we are talking about is um, branching random walk and it can exponentially explode. And uh, we need to have some quantity limits to uh, not overburden our uh, processor and not overburden our memory. We need to have some time limit. We have done um, some tricks about which you can uh, read and preprint because it's not uh, the real uh, target of today's talk. Yeah, let's go strictly to the uh, results. So on the left panel, you can see the result for the non-random medium. So this is, looks like a Gaussian noise. And it must be Gaussian noise because it's, it's like a Monte Carlo estimate of the, some non-random variable. And on the right panel, you can see the random medium. Uh, on the time two, the field of uh, quenched moments looking like, like this, but with three peaks. If we uh, use the, um, if we are, if we like to, um, like we have chosen the time two because there is three peaks, not one. On the time three, there is, will be only one peak, uh, this one. This is the winner. And this is homogeneous media. And in non-homogeneous media, the picture is the same. So again, we have high intermittent peaks from the random medium, and for the non-random medium, we have uh, the Gaussian noise. That's great, but uh, this is only the pictures. Uh, the idea of intermittency is that uh, not we have just one peak, one high peak, but the contribution of this peak rise over time. Uh, because, uh, for example, uh, we can have uh, a picture like this. If we just uh, plot the sample of log normal variable, there will be, again, some high peak or some tail realization, uh, and that proved nothing. So to prove that what we are seeing is exactly intermittency, we choose the, uh, I think, most simple statistical approach. We just consider it the following statistic. So if we know that uh, the intermittency means that the high peak uh, gives the, the, the higher and higher con contribution over time, let's just do the following. Let's just calculate a yield moment and then calculate annealed moment without some extreme uh, trajectories, without some extreme quenched moments. Uh, if we know that the contribution of very high peak grows over time, then this variable will grow over time. If the contribution is constant, 
then this variable will be constant over time. And uh, we have one. It appears that this variable is constant in the non-random media, and this variable rise over time, uh, increase over time in the random media. But again, there is an uh, interesting question. Uh, we have this, um, we can think about it in a statistical way. This is statistic. So uh, under null hypothesis of non-random media, it looks like constant, and under alternative hypothesis, it increases. And what about different k? Maybe for some k, uh, we, like if we take, take a look at this definition, we just uh, know that for k equal to 0, it's constant. And for k equal uh, 15, it's the ratio of the average and the median. So it's uh, well defined. But maybe there is some strange, um, strange effect, like if we raise k, maybe this uh, variable will be big for small case, and again, uh, do something like this. Maybe, and maybe not. Uh, we cannot answer this theoretically by now, but we again have to do some uh, modeling, and it appears for the non-random media, as we, we know by theory, and it appears that it is equal to constant for each k and for each t. That's great, because in non-random media there is no intermittence at all. Uh, and in random media, for uh, again, this is log, log axis. So for each fixed k, this is a strictly increasing sequence. So the conclusion is uh, we can uh, show that intermittency can arise on the finite times, finite times. And we now have some statistics to estimate this intermittency. And <laughs> I forgot to state the main problem of my talk. The main problem was uh, we know that intermittency is uh, some behavior that can be, um, that we can see only on the infinite times. So it's, it's uh, let me just show the uh, definition one last time again. So this is this. Yeah, so this is some limit behavior. Uh, we don't know what's really uh, new before is this behavior can be achieved on the finite times, finite times. And it appears that yes, we just can see it on very simple models and on the finite times. So that's all. Thank you very much for your attention. And if there is any questions, I'm glad to ask uh, for it. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> this is exactly Anders Modern. There is a parabolic, uh, yeah, parabolic, yeah. Okay, yeah. Uh, in uh, the Anderson uh, model, we have the Dietrich spectrum and uh, how we use uh, how this, this entire task, or? So here we have, um, uh, there is, um, like, we have this equation for the random, with the random, uh, yeah. yeah, and, uh, Честно говоря, я вообще ничего не знаю о структуре спектра В. Это же случайный оператор. А что? Да, я это не изучал. То есть, нет, этого я не знаю.